racing fan. This is Hollywood of HollywoodDragRacing.com. Got an exciting interview I want to bring to y'all with one of the original Pro Street founders, Ken Stotts. Interview happened before. I know a lot of y'all already know his son Frankie went down on the DME's motorcycle, but uh, as y'all also know, Frankie returned back to the track on Sunday. You know, did not break a bone, had a little road rash, obviously. You know, he said he had a concussion, got back in the game. You know, uh, he was medevac from the from the uh, the uh, racetrack. We were glad. All the prayers and stuff that everybody put in for him, got him safely back to the racetrack where he was able to come out, let everybody know he was good. You know, obviously he's going to be sore, you know, from taking the fall. You know, uh, luckily him and the motorcycle seemed to kind of come out you know, with all things considered, you know, pretty good. But uh, like I said, we've got an exclusive interview for y'all. So sit back, enjoy it, and I'll see y'all in the end. See y'all at Man Cup now. What's going on, bud? What's up, man? I'm, interv I'm interviewing. This ain't live, but this is my footage I need. So, oh, to, where's your buddy, man? He's on his way. He's on his way. It's his dad. Okay, well, hell, y'all introduce y'all selves, man. I'm Steve with Max CCU. It's Frank Stott for DMV Racing. Cool, cool. Well, what y'all do, man? Tell us a little bit about what y'all got going on, what y'all doing here, and all that good stuff. Uh, so we supply electronics to all the racers here and support. And Try to help people go fast. Okay, and how can they find you? MaxECU.com. Okay, so how is that support system? I mean, I know that like when people get into like changing programs, stepping up their game and stuff like that, they get out there, they buy this big time good program, and then they out there on the island by themselves. What's the support like for that? Well, it uh, we depend heavily on our dealers. Uh -huh. So like DME is a dealer, and whoever they sell sell to, mm -hmm. we expect you know all of our dealers to support the customers. And right. I'm there as a backup to the dealers. Okay. So, but I'm here now so my dealers can race and then I can support their customers. Gotcha, gotcha. So, yeah, it's, so it's uh, a community. It has to be. Right, right, right. There's just too many combinations and too much money being spent to not come out here and take it seriously and help people. I put a smile on my face, I get, you know, right. the business just grows. Make people happy and business grows. That's right, right. You know, I was leaning, man. You got me about to go in there with your Max EC, you on my Pro Stock bike. Guy. That's what I'm going to use there. I'm going to use the we, we've got, Pro Stock bike system. That's what I'm going with. Matt uh, Matt Smith just debuted his Suzuki in, uh, in uh, Houston with a Max on it. Right. And uh, top speed, first qualifier, and had a little clutch problem, but 
went 199 miles an hour. Karen went 199. Angie went 199. So, so it seems like they got it dialed in, right? Well, it's not dialed in yet, but it's, it's a really good first pass. Good baseline. Yeah, good first pass. Yeah. So here you go, Mr. Stiles. What you got to add to that? You riding the piece that, that got all the electronic on it and, and got everything dialed in, and you went. You still got to ride it though. Right, yeah, you still yeah. got to ride it. Right, so I'm sitting here and I'm like, you know, all that's good and everything, you know, but at the end of the day, somebody has a saddle and, and from, from, from talking to here, Mr. Nichols here, your dad's a legend in the race and pretty much got this game started. I mean, you've been from every type of like electronics, no electronics to this. Tell me about it, man. I got I to gotta know what it is like to, to be piloting piloting the, like a max ECU pilot motorcycle. What is that like? You know, the uh, confidence or whatever. Basically like a, like a rocket ship. Uh, when Steve uh, came to my dad and I about testing out a new ECU and stuff like that, Steve was uh, adamant about using the Max ECU. So my dad and I uh, worked with Steve what, for a year and a half, getting the Max ECU uh, all set and ready for bikes. Uh -huh. And uh, basically, I was a guinea pig for it. So <laughs> I, I went through all the trials and tribulations with uh, learning how to ride it and stuff like that with the Max on it. But uh, once we figured it out and we uh, pretty much made a statement back in 2018 at the uh, November World, uh, World Cup and Man at uh, World Finals. Uh -huh. uh, we went four six, six, four six sixty passes in a row and won both races in the weekend. And wow. uh, clean sweep, clean sweep exactly, and that pretty much solidified that Max ECU was the and that was the birth ECU of it pretty have. much. That was what say it solidified the product. Boom, stamp. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've been working with him and his dad. And his dad's racing partner at the time was Barry Henson. Okay. And uh, that would have been late 90s, early 2000s. Mm -hmm. So Kent, Kent is, uh, what do you call it, ride or die. You know, so if Kent calls me up, I'm going to give him whatever he wants. Right. So he's always, same thing with him. Because they, they helped me get started in this. Right, right. right. So, you know, you, you dance with the one that brought you is what we say. Right, right. right. Kent's that guy. Uh-huh. You know? So... Yeah, I owe a lot to him, and he's been a he's been a friend for the past twenty some odd years, and it's a it's a pleasure for me to drive him around. And I right. call it the OG Express. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You so tell, I went, uh, yeah, you tell me like, man, this is a real OG right yeah. here. You got to come. I was like, man, I'm, I'm you know, I really appreciate you guys to be straight up with you. Know, I came out here in 460, just trying to cover 460 simply because I'm not a culture vulture. I don't care about this. I'm just trying to build motorcycle drag racing fans and engage people to yeah. come out and watch us do what we do. I feel like we're racers, but racers and tracks are kind of like business partners and our customer is the, yeah. the person that either watches it on the gate or watches it digitally. You know what I'm saying? So I'm here for y'all. You know, let me thank y'all for letting me interview you guys and you know, get a little bit to know about y'all side of the deal. Cause I never been in the pro street game, you know what I mean? But man, I love these bikes, man. I mean, take me around, let me see what you got going on over here. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Andy. yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, when Andy come back out, maybe we'll yeah. take us for a walk or something. Because I don't know what we can and can't show you. Can I see? You. I got yeah. you. Yeah, that's good. A lot of secret sauce in there. All right, well, look here. I'm a, I'm, when, the, when the OG come by, <laughs> I'm going to come back by and we're going right. to wrap it up a little bit more, man. All I appreciate right. no y'all times, man. Nice meeting you, brother. Thank yeah. you. Too. All right, cool. Look who I got running up on me, man. The Honda man himself, man. What's going on, legend? Uh, doing uh, pretty good. Man, Just introduce yourself. Tell them who you are, man. And, uh, Ken Stotts, uh, five-time national pro street champion. Uh, started the class in 95, and uh, this year is my retirement year. I'm The last year I finished in 2019. So what brings you to the track, man? Well, my son is still riding. Uh -huh. When he stopped riding, when we shut our team down, DME needed a rider for their grudge bike, uh -huh. and uh, that's what he's been doing. So look at here, man. I'm sitting here with the the beginning number of Pro Street. Right. What, what yeah. was the what was the idea that came to your head when that came to birth? Well, there was there was all kinds of people. There was Tommy Maselli on the East Coast. 
claiming he was the fastest. Billy Bose claiming he was the fastest. There was a couple guys in Chicago, myself Let's walk and talk, man. Let's walk and talk. I like walking and talking. Walking and talk is good. Myself included. Um, nobody really knew who had the fastest street bike. There right. was no rules. There was no no race. Uh -huh. So uh, we finally convinced ProStar to put something together with a just a small rules. It was basically 68-inch wheelbase. All right, let me get the second parents. and final call. Uh, says it for anything else you want to do? Was legal. Yeah. No nitro. No nitro. No. Just so what, what was the clutch situation then as well? Oh, you had to drive it off the line. They're, they didn't yeah. have slumber clutches then. Uh, uh, straight, so, straight, straight cabled in. Cable yeah, spring. Yeah, cable or, or hydraulic. Uh -huh. And uh, you had your uh, mechan mechanical lockup. Uh -huh. But that was, uh, it was based on transmission speed, uh -huh. not engine speed, like a uh, slipper clutch is right. today. So you had to drive it off the line. There was no data. There was. It was seat of the pants ride, and there was a lot of fun. Oh yeah. I, I, what I what kind of horsepower, horsepower were you making back then? Five, you think? Uh, we we had a lot of horsepower. It was 243 <laughs> horsepower. Woo! Woo! On a Honda? And oh no, back then I was on a Suzuki. Okay, you was on a Suzuki then. In 95. Yeah. yeah, I signed with Honda in 99. Oh okay. So uh, that was that was a lot of horsepower because. We came to the first race. Nobody, no, nobody knew who was the fastest. Right. So uh, Tommy Maselli qualified second with an 860, and I was first with an 845. Uh -huh. And then there was the rest of the field was back in the 880s and 890s. Whoa, that's so, a lot of spread yeah, right there. Spread. So did y'all do anything to bring those guys up to speed to kind of make the class tighten up, or y'all just make them catch up themselves? Well, you know what it did. What it did was it let everybody know what the number is they had to shoot for. You know, maybe 880s was the fattest thing they'd ever heard of. Right. So they thought they were the fastest. Right. Or even there were some guys running nine O's that thought they were going to come in and clean up. Right. Well, now you know what the standard is. You, <laughs> you know said the standard. You got well then in the eliminations. Then we dropped the record to 832 at 172. Woo. So it made it known. This is what you got to do. And what was the wheelbase like on something like that at that time? Everything was 68 inches. Whoa. 68 inches, two inch ground clearance. And then, uh, but the nice thing back then, you had to run a road course. Everybody got together Friday, and there was a lead truck and a follow truck, a chase truck. Uh, <laughs> good. So you took off, it had to self start. Uh -huh. Drive this 20 miles without getting passed by the chase truck, uh -huh. and then uh, pull over, shut it off, and refire it within a minute to make sure your stuff was it's a street, street bike. bike. Yeah, street, a real street bike. We would lose two or three every time we did a street ride. Uh huh. It was it was a lot of fun. Man, let's walk on up here and see what else is going on. Man, right. so who was who was the guys that really was just still pain in the butt right back then? Well, I'm talking about like kept you up at night yourself. Remember? Tommy in the beginning, Tommy Maselli. Tommy great Maselli guy. had we, your number. And we're great friends. Yeah. Big, Big Phil and Tommy had had the bike they called Gazuki. Uh huh. Now they were street racers. Right. I was I came from funny bike racing. Whoa, so I didn't know that you ran. So you back there with uh like Neil Lane and all those. Oh guys. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, but the, the thing is I only rode one year. Uh-huh. The rest of the time I was with the Mr. Turbo funny bike team with TJ Hoffmeister. Okay. First six second funny bike, first six or two hundred mile hour funny bike. And then fifteen years later. We were the first six second street, uh, turbo street bike, right. and uh, the first 200 mile an hour record holder. Wow. So it was kind of kind of cool. Yeah, so check this out. So I was back there with your son and Steve Nichols, and we were talking about that Max ECU and all that stuff. What could you have done with that stuff back then? It's man? unbelievable, unbelievable. Because people laughed at me at the first race. I was the only one that, that had data. Uh -huh. Dave Schultz, just a phenomenal person. I met him, I spent a week with him before then. Fantastic guy. Yeah. He told me, Ken, he goes, there is no substitute for that. I don't care what it costs to put it on your bike. If you want to win, do it. Yeah. So I did it. It was very expensive back then for right. the street bikes. Right. Uh, for any bike, really. Uh -huh. uh, we didn't even have it on the funny bike. Right. So I found a way to put it on my street bike, and the learning process was tenfold. I could learn so much more in one pass than anybody else by the seat of their pants. 
10 guys telling you 10 different things that they thought they saw the bike do. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Data. Data told me what it did. Data. Period, period. Unbelievable how fast we advanced. So what do you think about all the stuff that they're using in the street bikes now? I mean, like, class, you're the, you're the, you're, you're the originator of the class. You've seen it progress. Did you ever think that it would make it to where it is now? No, no. Matter of fact, when uh, we were running, uh, we got... Uh, the first year they asked me what we thought, I said, I think we could get into the S7s. Uh -huh. And then when uh, Brock Davidson went a 797, uh, they asked me again what they think the threshold is. Right. I said, if somebody ever goes to 750, I would be surprised. <laughs> now, where are they going now? Well, 634, I think, is the record. And who holds that? Uh, Jeremy Teasley. That's enough. So, well, so, so is Jeremy the pain in the side for DME right now? Well, not right now. Jeremy is just in grudge racing. Uh -huh. But back when, you know, two years ago when I stopped Pro Street, yeah, it was Jeremy who was riding for DME, right. and there was Jeremy and Rodney Williford, uh -huh. and then we were the Honda team with Frankie riding my bike. Right. That's your and son, Frankie, right? Yeah. Okay. Frankie Mark started my shot. So, it is funny. I, I'm no longer Ken Stotts, I'm Frankie's dad. You're Frankie's dad now. You, that means you're OG, official OG title. OG. The old guy. He said he had the OG shuttle going around yesterday with Steve Nichols, man. Me and Ricky are the original OGs. You're talking about Ricky Gatson, right? Ricky Gatson, yeah. Tell me a little bit about your history with Ricky, man. Oh, we go way back. Oh, yeah. The nice thing about Ricky, Ricky can relate to any crowd. Now, I'm not a street racer, so I go down there in the middle of the grudge racing, and they got all this driving and all this stuff going on <laughs> people betting and ricky's right in there with them yeah but then ricky and i'll go to like ricky was the face for honda for right kawasaki i was honda right we'd go to these corporate functions and you never saw a more professional man right that's right i couldn't do both <laughs> you got to stay I'm one okay way or the other corporate setting I don't know what to do in the middle of a, of a grudge race yeah. where they're squawking and I, you got to give me the hit that I couldn't. It was that, just too, it was too yeah. fast paced. It was, like, it was like shooting dice for you, wasn't it? But Ricky, just like that, he was great at it. So what's your favorite story about you and Ricky, man? Well, how about this? I'm going to give you a happy story. One of them, I'm going to kick Ricky's but type story at the same time. They're, they're, they're kind of the same story because one time we came to the line and we had been jawing back and forth, you know, in the pits. And we came to the line, he looks over at me, he goes, like this. Uh -huh. You know, he said on his bike, he goes, I'm like, oh, that's how it is. <laughs> so we got it down and I beat him that pass, but then he won the race. Oh, so you won the battle, but he won the war. Yes. All right, man. Well, let's walk on back up here, man. It's been a pleasure, man, getting to know you, man. You know, I ain't really know much about you. I, I've seen your bikes. I've never met you personally. But I remember those Blackbirds, though, those Hondas, ain't that right? Yeah, those Blackbirds were the best. When Honda switched between the Blackbirds and 1,000, uh -huh. the work was 10 times as much because it wasn't meant to put out 500 horses. Horse. Right, yeah, you know, that's kind of the blackbird. The blackbird could take five, six hundred horse, no problem. Man. It was, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun racing the blackbird. So here we go. We're back at the camp, man. Anything if you would like to tell up and coming racers, you know, that's interested in drag racing. Period. I mean, we know that once you get the pro street, man, this is like a dream of the crop right now, man. So this is not the entry level at all. No. What, what, what do you say if someone wants to get to this level? What's the best path to get to Pro Street? Real Street is a really good way to get used to what it takes because you'll 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 build your badass street bike, you go to your local track, and if you happen to be the fastest one there, then get your butt to a, a national and enter Real Street. Mm -hmm. You know, check out the rules online, enter Real Street, and see how you do there. Mm -hmm. You'll have a real awakening. You may be good, or you may get awakened to how much more work you have to do. That's, Your that's heart a better will way. tell you that's a way how much it. you want to do. Right. You know, you can't just say, I want to do this. The work, you, you got to put in the work. Right, right. Man, appreciate your time, brother, man. Nice meeting you. I'm going to chop this up, man. Shoot this down here with y'all. What, what bike is your son riding over here? Is he He's riding, riding on the, 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 the Jixxer? The one on the shelf. The, the carbon fiber Jixxer. The one on the shelf over there. Yep. Take a little peek at it. I ain't going to get over here too much. I know they got a lot of trade secrets over here. I don't want to be no, letting none out. You can take all the pictures you want. Y'all good with me? Second bottom wall right there. Top top forfeit. Y'all good? Videoing? Okay.
So this was your sunrise right here? This is the one, yeah, this is the one my sunrise. Carbon fiber, man. Yep. The whole body is carbon, man. Yeah. It's, it's just the most, it's the most beautiful piece of the machinery right if, there. If man. there's a work of art in motorcycles, this is it. That is a beautiful piece, man. And this is a, this bike showtime or this bike doesn't show time? At this time, no more. No more time, doesn't show time no more. So this is considered a grudge bike at this point. Right. What's your name, man? Let everybody know who you are, what you're doing I'm, here. I'm Demi, at DME Racing. DME Racing. Yeah. Where they can find you all that somebody want to get some work done or anything like that? Uh, we're out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, um, and you can find us on dmeracing.com. I appreciate that, boss. Thank you. Hey, man, look here. Mr. Stott, it's been a great time talking to a legend, man. <laughs> Hey, you the OG now. I'm the OG. Hey, you, you, you uh, what's your son's name again? One more time. Frankie. You're Frankie's dad. So, yeah, I'm Frankie's dad. <laughs> all right, man. Nice meeting you again, sir. Yeah, I'm cutting this up and getting it to you, all right? Thank you, much. All right, good deal. And this is it over here, the DME tent. They're getting ready to rock and roll today. Number two. Number two. I'm number two, too, so welcome to the number two club. I think we're number two or three, somewhere down there. <laughs> all right, cool. Which bike's in the number two? All right. That's Jason Dunnigan. Jason Dunnigan, right? Yeah. Okay, that's Jason right there. Yeah, that's All right. Jason. What's up, Jason? What's up? And what you got going on over here? Hey, man, me and you sitting at number two in our class, man. We got to tighten up, right? We got to. We're going to have to go a little harder. All right. What you got in store for him right here? She, run, she can run a high 40 right now. Uh, I think she'll run a high 40 this morning. Okay, cool. Well, man, look here, man. Good luck out there today. Uh, man, thank you very and much. And we'll get back with you later on. All right, All right man. This is a bad you. ombre right here, man. Y'all see this thank is the DMV. Jason Dunnigan is right here. It's the rider. Just metal. Turbo bike. Beautiful piece of work right here. And, uh, this is what you call class act operation 100%. Every time they come to the track, they set up nice, put out very good products, and you can always find them at the top of the leaderboard. I